What's up everybody? Gull here, or Jack Pittman. This is my WoW content, so let's say I'm Gull. I'm with the guild Vicious, and I play on the server Bigglesworth. This video is a guide on how to farm the nature resistant gear easily from Dire Mole West. Let's look at the pros and cons of this stone bark farm. The first thing I want you to understand about this farm is it's very easy to learn. If you compare this to Tribute, Tribute is like a 10 out of 10 on difficulty and this is like a 2. You do one thing in this and the hardest part is pulling stuff. The combat is exactly the same and you're fighting the entire time. And if you're on a server that doesn't have too many other people doing this, when you get some of these drops, you can sell them for 3, 4, 500 gold. I've gotten three of the stone bark things on my server and I've sold them for 300 to 400 gold each. And that alone has made this more profitable based on time spent than the tribute farm. But that's based on RNG. You could kill 800 of these and not get anything. It's really unlikely. You're probably gonna get at least one valuable item out of every 200 kills, but it's possible. Another pro of this place is that world buffs and consumables are really effective because as you're about to see in this farm, you are fighting almost the entire time. Unlike in Tribute and other farms where you're running around and jumping and you're not actually directly shooting your bow, okay? So what are these valuable items that we could get? Let's take a look at that. There's three main items that you can get from this specific kind of farming. Stonebark gauntlets, petrified bands, and Eodolin talismans. The Stonebark gauntlets and the Eodolin talismans can be hundreds of gold depending on your server. The petrified bands sell for like 10 to 100 depending on your server as well and depending on what other people are doing the AQ prep and that kind of thing. So as you can see, the Eodolin talismans just drop from these little specter guys whereas the other two items drop from all three Trent types. You're gonna avoid two of these tree types, and I'll get more into detail about that further in this video. And the Yodelin Talisman isn't gonna be that common for you because you're really only gonna be killing two to four tal or two to four of those mobs per reset. You are gonna kill them every time, but you're not gonna fight that many of them. So now let's look at the mobs you wanna focus on, which is everything in this courtyard. You can see that there are nine spots here where the mobs you want to kill might spawn. Technically, the three available mobs all drop the items you want, but what you want is the mobs that are easiest to kill, which are the Trents, okay? So in those nine spawn spots, each one will spawn one of these three groups. There's either three Trents, one healer, two Trents, one healer, or three Trents, no healer. So ideally, you want nine spawns of three Trents no healers because then you can just pull all of them at once. I've never actually seen that happen. I've had a group, an ID with seven of those groups. And that's kind of one of the things I love about this is it's just really fun because sometimes you just get a group and you just pull one. Other times you get all of them and you pull all of them and it's really fun. But this is a pretty typical spawn. Usually you want to focus on the bottom half of the instance, okay? Um, or the bottom half of this courtyard here. And you can see there's five total groups here. And in this case I'm about to show you, there are three good groups. These three Trents with no healers. And the reason you don't want to pull the healers is because they have infinite mana, and you're one person. And it's possible to kill them, but it's tricky. It's way easier to just pull tons of these Trents. So this is the instance I just showed you. As you can see, there's a healer in that group and there's no healers in that group, the group behind me now, or the group over there. You're gonna notice that throughout this entire time, there's these iron bark protectors, the one right in front of me. You wanna avoid those. There's, I think there's eight of them circling around the courtyard, or nine, there's, there's, there's a decent amount of them. They do drop the items that you want, but we'll get into more later why they're, they're not so ideal to farm compared to the trends that you're seeing me pull now. So as you can see, I've pulled the first group, the second group, and now I'm gonna run all the way to this wall and then pull that group. And now these guys are a little bit close to me, so I'm gonna use an iron grenade here just because it's very useful to keep, give yourself some distance. Iron grenades are basically the only item that's really, really useful in this kind of farming because this is a lot of just pathing and pulling. This is the trickier part, and it's why I love it so much because I love pulling, it's just fun. And the satisfaction of seeing like 21 of those tree guys just chasing you, oh, it's great. So now let's get, get into those protectors I was just touching about. These guys, there's gonna be a bunch of them and sometimes you're gonna see four or five just right next to each other, right? You have to be really careful with these because if you get within like half of your range, 
Like, say you can attack, you're at max range. If you get halfway to the mob, basically, then they can cast this thorns on you and root you. And you don't want that to happen, because usually you have a bunch of stuff chasing you, and you're just going to die almost instantly. So as soon as you aggro it, immediately you scatter shot. You have to use scatter shot very quickly. And then that's going to give you out of uh, enough time to get out of the root range. But you want a concussive as well anyway, just to get more distance, and then feign death. Don't just feign as soon as you aggro it. Because if you're too close to the mob, your feign is going to be resisted, okay? So when you've pulled these mobs, how do we kill them? Now let's take a look at that. You're going to take them to this kill corridor. And the reason it's a kill corridor is because you can just jump up on that ledge with two jumps. One's going to get you halfway, second one's going to get you all the way. And then the mobs are just going to run all the way back. You jump up on the ledge, jump off, jump up on the ledge, jump off, jump off on the ledge. And this is what I was getting at about the effectiveness of consumables here especially things like mana oil you're in combat fighting constantly you don't really have that much downtime once you start the fighting okay and these guys are gonna you're gonna aggro two every time you do the first pull of the instance one's gonna get aggroed straight away and one's gonna get aggroed in the middle of the fight when you aggro him run up to him and pass him because you want all these mobs to be grouped together you want them to be close that is the main goal here. If you have a lot of stragglers, then you're going to jump off the ledge and be getting hit. And jump off on the ledge and be getting hit, and then you're going to die. Okay? And you kind of want to time it, because if, if you have too many mobs here, and you outpace yourself, you can kill the mobs, and then their bodies are going to disappear. So try to damage them all pretty consistently, and then kill them all in a group. And it also makes it way more satisfying when you get to the part where you loot everything. Because there's just a bunch of them, and you just go loot, 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 loot. It's freaking awesome. I love it. I will say that when you're practicing this, don't try just fighting nine at once. Just find one pack of three trents and try and kill it. You're also going to aggro two of these specters. And that's the best way. And honestly, every time I've gotten the stone bark gauntlets, it's not been from a big pull. Not that that means everything, anything, right? But let's say you want to kill the protectors, because they actually have a better drop rate than the trents but i don't advise that you focus on these just because it's a steeper learning curve to kill them and it, it is possible to do it but they have so much armor um it really it, it takes longer to kill them that being said the drop rate is two or three times better um i personally like i like being able to fight just 21 trents or 20 something trents it's, it's really fun i love that um whereas these protectors if you make one mistake and you're fighting a group of five protectors, you're gonna die. And I'll show you this mistake right now. I'm about to make it. See, I didn't go to the right place, and he passed towards me, and he rooted me. And I got lucky, because I was out of his range. But you can get rooted, and still be in his range, and then the whole pack comes, and they just wreck you. So this is where something like deterrence comes in use, but really, if you're fighting these protectors, keep them on that back ledge. Do not let them pass that corner. Because if they pass that corner, they're gonna be able to get you, right? And what you can do, you can have your pet set up to the side, and that's gonna help. And I'll show you how to do that later. Cause you're, you can have your pet just on passive next to you, and he's usually gonna get thorned instead of you, and that'll give you some protection. But in general, I just, I enjoy killing the Trents more. I find it more fun. But sometimes if you're worried about getting locked out of your instance, you've reset too many times, you're gonna wanna do some more mixed mob pulling, okay? Because you're not always going to be able to get a lot of trends. You're going to get IDs that have healers in every single group. That's going to be more common. Because each group has a 33% chance that it's going to have no healers. So that means it's a 66% chance that it will have a healer. Okay? So it's more common to have the healers. So if you, if you want to fight these at the same time, you can. But you have to be really careful. Like I said, use your pet just to the side so that your pet will get rooted instead of you and don't as soon as those guys pass the corner the only exception is if you're about to cast an aim shot you want to jump down and whenever you aggro these guys it might be a good opportunity to start killing the back end because you can kill these two groups but what you can't do is have the protectors being rooting you while you're fighting the trents because if you get rooted when you're doing this kind of pulling, and one of these packs of like 20 guys gets to you, you die almost instantly. You cannot let that happen. 
And so sometimes you can just fight the tail end like this. These ledges are incredibly useful. You can use these ledges to kill basically every mob in this entire instance except the bosses. And that's just because, like, that boss right there, the big, big Trent guy, he teleports you to his feet. So you, you, can't, you can't do this. You can't really, like, escape his arena, so to speak. Um, and what, what you want to find when you're doing mixed pulling is you want to separate the groups really well. Like, like you see how the, you can't even see the protectors I started fighting because they're all coming towards me, right? And now, as soon as I start looting, you, there they are. They're around the corner. You want to really time yourself because if you don't pay attention to the health of your enemies, then you're not going to be able to loot them before the bodies disappear because you're still in combat with uh, you're, 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 you're fighting other things, right? And sometimes the enemies you're fighting can get in the way of the stuff you want to loot. So you got to be really careful. Make sure you separate everything. But as you can see, it's totally possible to fight the protectors at the same time that you're fighting the trends. But you have to make sure that you time it well and uh, don't do what I just did and send the pet in. Basically, if protectors are around, your pet can only serve as a block for this thorn's attack. And when you get thorned, cast your aspect of the wild. It's gonna increase your nature resistance, and sometimes it'll get rid of the thorn straight away. Every tick, there's gonna be a chance to get rid of the thorn. So as soon as you get thorned and rooted in spot, ideally you wanna cast aspect of the wild, and then deterrence if enemies get close to you. But you don't have to use deterrence. It's completely possible to just avoid the situations where it's necessary. If you liked this kind of content, check out my other World of Warcraft videos on this playlist. However, most of my YouTube channel is actually about earning money online. And as a person who plays games, I'm sure you would benefit from being able to get all of your bills paid just from the computer. It's completely possible. You can live a life where you work less and you earn more money and you have all the freedoms you need to spend your time doing what you want. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, I offer consulting. I do a free session, and then after that, it's $20 per 30-minute session. I will focus on being as positive and encouraging to you as possible and giving you whatever information I have access to that could help you figure out how to use the internet to earn money online. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Best of luck. See you next time. Ciao!